How's it going, you guys? And welcome back to another episode. My name is Bryce with Sensego Mobile Car Wash and Detailing. And I got a busy day ahead of me. I've got two RVs that I'm washing um, out in the Gold Canyon area in Arizona. And I've been in this RV resort quite a bit over the last uh, couple of weeks. In fact, I had a customer the last time I was in there who said, Hey, um, you must be on the approved list of detailers. And you know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I don't know what he's talking about, but uh, I called the RV resort right after I ended that job, and I said, hey, what is this approved list of detailers? And she said, oh yeah, you gotta just send us a uh, proof of insurance for your company, and we put you on a list that basically shows <clears throat> that we approve you to be in our RV resort. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I might start calling around some of the local RV resorts and seeing if they have something similar. Uh, it was the first time I had heard of an approved <clears throat> an approved detailers list. So it might be worth a shot, you guys. If you're out there um, cleaning in RV resorts like I am, give these resorts a call and see if they have some kind of list that they can put you on. It might be worth your time. But today I've got uh, what is I call my basic level one wash and spray wax package. Uh, which usually takes me about three and a half hours. Both of the RVs today um, are, are 40 feet. In fact, I think the other one might be 38 feet. So one's 38 feet, the other one's 40 foot. Um, I booked out two jobs. They're both in the same resort. So as soon as I'm done with one, I'm gonna cruise over to the other. Um, today's gonna be kind of just a fun video of just uh, how I wash an RV. And I know there's a million different techniques and styles out there of doing this. I'm just gonna show you what works for me. All right, guys, well, uh, let's uh, get to work. So real quick, I wanna talk with you about how I'm able to clean two really big RVs with only 50 gallons of water. Because of my spot-free water system behind me, I'm able to make spot-free water on demand wherever I'm at, as long as I'm connected to a water source, which in this case I am. So I run hard water, tap water, through my system, and by the time it enters into my water tank, it's at zero parts per million. So I, I spend the most amount of time on the front of the RV. I want to make sure that that looks absolutely perfect. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so it only takes less than 60 seconds to purge my system, get kind of the old stagnant water out of the filter housings that was there from the day before, before I start making water. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of bypass mode and I'm gonna put it into water making mode and uh, here's how I do it. You basically just move, there's two knobs, one on a solenoid, which is the inlet of my pre-filter system, and this blue knob right here gets pushed down. Now I'm in water making mode. Here's the cool thing, I've got a full tank of water in my van right now, there's 50 gallons here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn my system on. <clears throat> You're actually not going to hear the system turn on because of the float valve that's inside of my water tank. The float valve is telling my system there's no need to make water right now because I have a full tank. But here's why I'm flipping that on. As the water level in my tank starts to go down, there's going to be a certain level uh, where that float valve inside my tank is going to tell my system to kick on to start making more water. The reason why I turn that on is because there's really no need for me to kind of sit here and guess when my water tank level is going to get low, right? I want my float switch to do that for me. So I can go out here and I can work on this RV, no problem, I don't have to worry about it. And then whenever the water starts running low, it'll kick on for me and start making water immediately. So I can work out here uninterrupted and not have to worry about a single thing with my spotless water system. It's kind of running itself for me, which makes it nice for me because I don't have to sit here and monitor it uh, all the time. After I'm done spraying down the hood, the grill, and the bumper, just to get those bugs a little bit wet to make them easier to peel off the paint as I'm, as I'm cleaning it, um, I'm then going to go ahead and grab Extra Tough. Uh, it's an extremely safe, all-purpose cleaner. I really enjoy using it to get off, especially caked on bugs off of the front of RVs. It does a really, really great job. 
The awesome thing about Extra Tough is um, I'm working in Arizona where there's a lot of sun and uh, it's sun friendly. So even if it dries on the paint, I can reactivate it by just getting it a little bit wet. So I'm not super worried about it dwelling on the paint. Um, as you saw, I just went ahead and, and covered the whole entire grill area and the bumper. And I'm gonna go through with my non-abrasive scrub brush. This is from Aero, Cosmet uh, Aero Cosmetics. Um, I highly recommend these for you guys who are out washing RVs. They're, they're fantastic and they're very safe to use. All right, after I'm all done washing the front of the coach, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do an inspection to see did I get all of the bugs, the bees, the butterflies, all the stuff that gets smashed into the grill and the paint, did I get it all? After I'm all do done doing that inspection, um, I'm gonna come back through with my non-abrasive scrub brush and I'm gonna go ahead and I'll lightly clean any of the areas that I might have missed. and we're gonna follow the same process with extra tough on the windshield. So I wanna show you guys why it is absolutely mission critical uh, to never wash an RV with tap water. Um, the RV resort where I'm at, look at how hard the water is here. Check this out, guys. 555 parts per million. That is crazy. So as it's leaving my RO, I'm able to strip that back from 554, 555, down to 25, down to zero and that's the water that's going inside of my tank and making my life a whole lot easier all right you guys the next thing that we're going to move to is the mirrors the mirrors get really really dirty so you can see all the bug splatters up there you know again take your time on the areas that are the dirtiest those areas are also typically the the spots where the owner as they come and they look at the job that you did they're going to pay attention to that so go the extra mile, spend a little extra time making sure that the mirrors look perfect, that the windshield looks perfect, that the front of that coach just looks absolutely stunning. All right, you guys, this is a lamb's wool mop head. This is by far the safest way you can clean an RV fifth wheel travel trailer where the paint really matters, right? Where you do not want to induce any type of light scratches or swirl marks. It is the softest thing in the world. Uh, but uh, anyways, on the inside is leather. I mean, this is really, really well made. This brand is Mary Moppins. You can buy this online um, on amazon.com. Uh, but uh, if you're gonna be out washing RVs, you guys, especially really expensive ones, make sure you're using the correct uh, products. This one here is five inches. They also sell ones that are longer. The reason why I went with a five inch Mary Moppins mop head versus the longer ones is because this one conveniently fits inside of my wash bucket. So it's not awkward, you know, where I'm having to dip in one side and then the other, this one fits completely into my bucket. So uh, for those of you, who are looking to buy something like this, head to Amazon Mary Moppins. Most, probably one of the things that I love most about uniforms like this with big pockets is check this out 
<laughs> it'll fit a whole bottle of invisible glass. So as I'm up on a ladder cleaning windows, a uniform really can make a big difference. All right, guys, so this one is all done. I'm gonna spin you around and show you how it looks. And then I've got one more to do. So on to the next. All right, you guys, we are on location number two. So this one is going to be a fifth wheel. I'm gonna jump up on top of the roof and clean that first. And then we're going to work our way around. Again, it should take about three and a half hours. Um, because I filmed so much on the first one, I'm not gonna do a ton of filming on this one. We're gonna follow the same steps, same principles as the first one. I uh, just repeat these on uh, this fifth wheel. If you've ever wondered how to bring back these Faded, gross, nasty decals on fifth wheels and RVs. Check this out, you guys. I'm gonna fill you in on a little secret, and you better hit the thumbs up if you find any value in this. You ready? Extra tough. That's right, the APC all-purpose cleaner, diluted one to one. Extra tough does a heck of a job cleaning up old, faded, decals so I'm almost wrapped up with job two for today you guys um, I'm gonna do a quick walk around on this fifth wheel and then we're gonna close it up and I hope everyone has a wonderful day we'll see you on the next one you guys